Zoro is one of the most badass characters in all of One Piece. And as one of the Straw Hats' main combatants, we have seen plenty of battles where he has gone toe-to-toe -to -toe against some of the toughest foes in the series. And yet, despite the numerous W's under his belt, our Straw Hat swordsman has also had his fair share of losses. But recent events have seen Zoro reach new heights after getting some very impressive power-ups. Which begs the question, can current Zoro beat everyone he lost to in the past. How would Zoro fare against an Admiral or a Yonko? Well, stay tuned because in this video we're going to discuss what if current Zoro fought everyone he lost to in the past. First, to set some parameters, we're discussing current Zoro as he is now versus his opponents as they were in the past. This means no new power-ups that they've had since Zoro fought them last. Although we are counting all of Zoro's new power-ups and we've recently witnessed Zoro reach new and unimaginable levels, placing him alongside some of the top combatants in the series. Not only has Zoro attained a new and powerful sword in Enmar, one of the rare 21 great great swords, an unruly blade that we've also seen Zoro able to tame, being only one of the two people able to do so, the other being the legendary Kazuki Odin. But then on top of that, Zoro has also recently unlocked not only Conqueror's Haki, but also the advanced application of Conqueror's Haki to imbue it into his weapons. And these feats truly elevate Zoro's status to be one of the few characters in the series with all three types of Haki and an even rarer group of people able to use advanced Conqueror's Haki. Add this to his already extreme levels of durability and endurance and we have a very scary combatant in Zoro indeed. So what does this mean about his matchups? Should this version of Zoro fight the opponents he lost to in the past. Let's jump straight into it. Starting with, how would Zoro fare against Kuina? Alright, it might almost be a blessing in disguise that Kuina already lost to some stairs because current Zoro could beat Kuina even with their wooden swords. Although unluckily for Zoro, he won't ever get the chance to prove himself against one of his greatest rivals. But luckily for you, you can prove yourself by clicking your greatest rival, the subscribe button. So get your finger ready and give that button the greatest shove in history, claiming your proudest victory. Next up, Buggy. I'm a big Buggy enthusiast, but the bombastic clown is not known for his power. I mean, Buggy caught Zoro by surprise in their first fight, and the only reason he won back then was because of the quirk of his devil fruit power. But this fight is pretty easy and needs no explanation. Because honestly, it doesn't matter what version of Buggy it is, Zoro is beating Buggy then, and beating Buggy now. And going from 0 to 100 real quick, next up is Dracul Mihawk. And well, didn't this get suddenly very interesting? Mihawk is prepared to wait as long as it takes for Zoro to surpass him. But is the current Zoro strong enough to beat Mihawk back at Baratier and claim the title of the world's strongest swordsman? We all know how the Baratier fight went. Mihawk toyed with Zoro who was giving it his all during the entire fight using only a small knife and only eventually pulling out Yoru out of respect for Zoro's will. But if current Zoro were to fight against Mihawk, then it's guaranteed that Mihawk would have felt how much of a threat Zoro is right away and wouldn't take him lightly, most definitely using Yoru from the get-go. I think this would be a very interesting fight and enough for Mihawk to not look as bored as he did in their original fight. Current Zoro is going to impress Mihawk, but ultimately, I think Mihawk still takes the win. But the question now is, would Mihawk have allowed Zoro to live? Because if you think about it, the gap at Baratie was so insurmountable that Zoro withdrew and sheathed his sword, accepting his defeat and offering his chest, which is what really impressed the warlord. But there's a chance that now, Mihawk might construe current Zoro to be at peak Zoro, although we know that another power-up is for sure coming down the road. Because with just how strong current Zoro is, I don't see Mihawk winning in the same way that he did at Baratie. Zoro might still not have a chance at taking the victory, but it would still take a good amount of effort from Mihawk to defeat the current Zoro, and the fight could even get to a position where Zoro is threatening Mihawk's life. So I think if Mihawk lets Zoro live, it would likely be because of the sword that Zoro is using. If Zoro had been using Shusui, for example, Mihawk might assume that Zoro was strong enough to turn Shusui into a black blade himself, therefore assuming that Zoro truly had reached his peak. Although, of course, we know that Shusui was already a black blade when Zoro got it. Luckily, Zoro left Shusui 
behind that Wano, now fighting with Enma instead. And because Enma is not yet a Black Blade, Mihawk would likely be impressed by current Zoro's level of strength despite not even having a Black Blade. And feeling Zoro's presence as a swordsman who could one day achieve this, Mihawk would likely get very excited at the prospect of fighting Zoro once he has his own Black Blade, therefore letting Zoro live. But as for the result of this battle itself, I'd still say that Mihawk wins after landing the final blow with his own Black Blade Yoru, allowing Zoro to live, but this time not just as someone with good promise, but an actual fun, near equal rival that he would like to clash swords with once again. Next up, Arlong. This fight might not even count and may even be controversial to consider because Zoro versus Arlong was a brief clash and an unfair match while Zoro was heavily injured. And with Arlong even back then noting how dangerous Zoro was, it's no question that current Zoro would have no problem dealing with this fishman. I'd even wager that a healthy Zoro back then could have a fair shot at beating Arlong. So current Zoro definitely wins without any difficulty. Next up, Anel. I feel like this needs to be said as much as it does. No one was beating Anel back in Skypiea outside of Luffy and that was only because of the elemental mismatch. But Luffy beating Anel even back then is proof that if you can touch Anel, you have a chance at beating him. And so it goes without saying that anything pre-gear Luffy was able to do is nothing in comparison to what current Zoro can do. In fact, you could even argue that Zoro might have been a lot more trouble for Anel even back then in Skypiea if only he had armament Haki then. I don't necessarily believe he would win, but that will be mostly due to the fact that unlike Luffy, all of Anel's attack down to even his most basic ones will have an effect on Zoro. Because after all, as much durability as Zoro has, and boy does he have plenty, he's not completely immune to lightning and Anel would just need to spam him enough until Zoro is completely defeated. Okay, I may have actually just lied because Zoro then had no chance of winning even beyond his durability because he also didn't have observation Haki. So catching Anel and matching his speed is something that Zoro back then wouldn't have been able to do. Current Zoro, however, shouldn't have any problems defeating Anel. First of all, Anel is probably the only matchup where I think Zoro would actually have a harder time than you would expect, but not because Anel is stronger. It's just because unlike Luffy or even Sanji, Zoro doesn't have a rubbery body nor an exoskeleton or a regenerative body. And so taking repeated attacks from Anel with his human body will gradually and compoundingly have an impact on his overall performance and it could get worse the longer the fight goes on. But in saying that, with current Zoro, I don't really even see this matchup lasting all that long. And on top of that, we've seen Zoro has mastered armament Haki thanks to Enma. And King of Hell Santoryu might sound like an overkill to use pre-time skip, but it is just one of many attacks that Zoro could use to end this fight quite easily in his favor. And using this sort of technique, which increases his power output and range right from the get-go, might sound unfair, but it also makes this a very easy win for Zoro. Next, looking at Zoro versus Luchi. Back at Water 7, Zoro was on the wrong end of an ass-kicking handed by Luchi alongside Luffy. Back then, Luchi's Tekai in Zoan form was too much for Zoro's sword to overcome. But not only has Zoro acquired a new and mighty sword in Enma since then, we've also seen what even a weakened Zoro can do against the toughest Zoan of all, Kaido, once he's awakened his Conqueror's Haki. And without even understanding the significance of this awakening, the weakened Zoro was still able to leave a scar on Kaido. So a full-powered, healthy Zoro, who has a better grasp of his Haki, and even the ability to imbue his swords with Conqueror's Haki, should have zero problems dealing with Luchi back in Water 7. And just for the fun of it, I even think that Zoro beats current Luchi even with his awakened Devil Fruit form. But with a little more difficulty than what he would have done to Luchi if current Zoro was back there in Water 7. So current Zoro versus Luchi back then should be a no-brainer victory for Zoro. Next up, Aokiji. Okay, first of all, the admirals are on another level. Even if we take into account the fact that King and Queen were both in a weakened state, they were still used to showcase Ryokugu's strength at Wano. It's really Oda's way of showcasing to us the hierarchy of fighters in One Piece, and Ryokugu even said that he wouldn't be an admiral if he would lose to mere Yonko commanders. Meaning that 
but it will take someone at least Yonko level to pose an actual threat. Not only a threat to him, but possibly any Admiral. So, is Zoro currently at that level yet? Well, let's take a look. We've seen Garp get out of Kuzan's ice attack, possibly due to his Haki, or maybe his plain brute strength. Either way, Zoro has enough of both to do the same thing. But okay, then Kuzan could probably repeatedly free Zoro, or at least attempt to do so. So then who would be exhausted first? Kuzan, who can seamlessly use his Devil Fruit ability, or Zoro, who will need to use his physical stamina. At the end of the day, Zoro is still at the early stage of awakening his Conqueror's Haki, which we know requires a lot of stamina. So I'd say that the men with more experience wins this one, resulting in another win for Kuzan. Kuma is a character just so hard to power scale. And oops, I just used that forbidden word. But seriously, we just didn't get enough of a look into Kuma's ability because he was fighting people significantly weaker than he was and showed utter domination without doing all that much. And so even if current Zoro were to fight Kuma, the warlord blocking an attack with his paw might simply end up with his opponent being sent far, far away, ending the fight in an instant. But there's no fun in that scenario. So let's go with Kuma and Zoro dueling like they initially did at Thriller Bark. And Zoro back then was able to surprise Kuma with an attack enough to expose what Kuma's body is really made of. So imagine what current Zoro could do now with his attack, with his blade coated in armament, infused with Conqueror's Haki, drawing out the flames of hell. I think as tough as Kuma's body is, he wouldn't be able to withstand a combination of these three. In fact, I would even argue that Zoro might only need to use one of these three power-ups and would just have to adjust the difficulty of this fight based on which one he chooses. For example, an attack with only coating his sword with armament Haki might end up in an extremely difficult fight, whereas a Conqueror's Haki infused attack could end this matchup a lot earlier than expected. So we'll just have to go with an average and say that ultimately Zoro wins in a mid-difficulty match. Now this next Admiral is a little different than the fight against Aokiji because being frozen and breaking out of it with your Haki is one thing, but against Kizaru, you would actually need to hit Kizaru. And so far, the only couple of times we've seen this was when the Admiral was caught off guard by Apu and when his attack was stopped by surprise by Rayleigh. But if a fight were to start on even ground between Zoro and Kizaru, this will prove very difficult for Zoro and that's not a knock on his abilities in any way. I just don't think that there's that many people in the series that I can see clearly beating Kizaru at all. Say what you want about how Shanks drove him off in film Red or how Ben Beckman stopped him in his tracks. And even in the latter scenario, Kizaru got away and was able to attack anyway. But this man is never seen to lose his composure. And the way that he was handing out beatdowns with ease at Saobodi was enough to show that even a battalion of good warriors are not able to stand on even ground with Kizaru. The best we got was a quick clash of swords with Rayleigh. And if Kizaru decides to turn this into a sword fight, then that could prove to be a disadvantage for the Admiral since this will allow Zoro to look for more openings and should be able to land a hit or two with his attack power and the fact that he is now able to bypass Kizaru's low gear intangibility. In which case, yes, Zoro might have a chance, but that's a big what if that assumes that Kizaru is dumb enough to agree to a swords fight with one of the best swordsmen in the series. But if we were to say that Kizaru decides to not play around and start shooting lasers, we saw in Zoro's recent fight against King that he only just managed to avoid King's laser-like attack, Tempura Udon, let alone block it. Albeit this was before awakening his Conqueror's Haki, but regardless, considering that Zoro would need to chase Kizaru while simultaneously avoiding or blocking the Admiral's attack, I think this will be a tough fight for Zoro. And at the moment, I think he's just a future sight away from turning this battle into an extreme difficulty match that could go either way. But for now, I still give it to Admiral Kizaru. Zoro is a strong enough fighter for Kizaru to take seriously and show his own strength against, but before ultimately defeating the Straw Hat Swordsman. Next up is a bonus because this is the Admiral I want Zoro to fight the most. Fujitora. Okay, so out of technicality, this battle might not be considered a loss, but Zoro was still overpowered by Fujitora, so it's still a matchup I want to discuss. And hey, if we counted Sanji's loss to Virgo, then we should do the same for this fight. Now, similar to how Sanji was able to kick even after feeling a crack in his leg, Zoro was able to still send an attack against Fujitora despite being pinned to the ground by the Admiral's gravity. And mind you, this is just to provide some context and not meant to be a comparison between 
between Zoro and Sanji's strength level, so don't get your panties up in a bunch. But if we were to see a full-on fight between Zoro and Fujitora, then from everything we've seen, and admittedly, we've seen very little of the Admiral, but tell me how anyone's gonna be able to stop a meteor from coming down. If it was just a straight-up swords fight, I'd be willing to put my money on Zoro, but in a showcase of the full extent of both their powers, Meteor Man takes this, and I just don't see a way to convince the argument in Zoro's favor. Again, I think if Zoro was to obtain future sight, then the fight could go differently, and even as for now, the King of Hell would prove to be a massive pain in the ass for the Admiral, but Fujitora still wins regardless. And next up, the strongest creature himself, Kaido. One of the things I would love to see is a fresh, full-powered Zoro after completely awakening his Conqueror's Haki versus Kaido. Because when we saw their clash, that was Zoro who had taken on a combined attack from two of the Yonko, which you could argue to have been the strongest attack seen to date, and something that ended up breaking almost all of Zoro's bones. But Zoro still managed to leave a scar on Kaido, albeit this was somewhat of a surprise attack, but it was even before Zoro had learned how to imbue his swords with his Conqueror's Haki, being the first person to have scarred Kaido since Odin. To the point that even for the briefest moment, in that scene, it seemed like Zoro was the biggest threat to Kaido on the rooftop. So a full-powered Zoro, fresh, and with all of his new power-ups, would likely land an attack against the same Kaido. I can't speak for how well Zoro would do against an equally fresh Kaido who hasn't fought a gazillion warriors while carrying an entire island, but that goes the same for any of Kaido's opponents in that case. So only considering current Zoro in a one-on-one -on -one fight against Kaido may be very interesting, but I still have to say that the Yonko wins this easily. At that point in the battle, Kaido still wouldn't have been as tired as he was by the end of the Onigashima battle, and knowing Kaido's own mastery of Conqueror's Haki and advanced Conqueror's Haki, plus his insane Zoan durability, we still have to give this to the Yonko. Meaning that Kaido would win in what I see as a mid-difficulty match. But still, overall, a very impressive resume. Zoro from here on would only lose to top-tier characters as he enters the realm of the top class fighters in One Piece. But what do you think? Do you agree with the outcomes of these matchups? Let me know by leaving a comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for listening to another one of my ramblings. This is Joy Girl and I'll see you again soon.